We will uh, go ahead and call the March 2nd, 2023 meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission to order. Because I have it. I used it. Um, can we call the roll, please? Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Fenster. Here. Commissioner Guyu. Here. Chairman Lane. Here. Commissioner Norton. Here. Commissioner Jacoby. Here. Councilmember Rodriguez. Here. Okay, thank you. We do have a quorum. Uh, we'll move on to approval of the February 2nd, 2023 minutes. Um, I know we did have one correction. Is that in the draft that's online or just on the, it is both? The correction is also published? Okay, great. So we had one correction to uh, the um, uh, note of the approval of the bylaws um, to include uh, applicable city, state, and federal laws and regulations. Um, that was a correction from Commissioner Barnard, uh, which is now incorporated. Are there any other comments or corrections on those minutes? Not, I'd entertain a motion. All right, I have a um, motion to approve the minutes from Commissioner Fenster and seconded by C Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, next, we have report from the chair. Um, and uh, I did want to make one comment that we can probably uh, also address in the retreat, but I, but I did have a question come up about this body and how it operates and the kind of relative formality of it, say compared to other boards that might meet around a table in a conference room somewhere. And uh, I guess I wanted to just uh, remind us all, uh, especially for any new commissioners that we, we are set up this way because we are a quasi-judicial body that has to act on um, applications that come in and take public hearing, and it's a, it's, it's a more formal situation, and so we are stuck in this sort of environment where uh, it is not as uh, free-flowing as maybe a Parks and Rec Board or something like that, but that's in part because of how this... Uh, commission is actually set up and if we end up with one of the staff attorneys at the retreat maybe they could explain that in more detail if necessary uh, the one other thing I would like to note is that uh, the Longmont Downtown Development Authority is actually hosting next Wednesday at uh, six o'clock at the Longmont Theater a building better cities um, kind of little seminar or discussion, and they're gonna be talking about how to grow downtowns while retaining their character. Since that downtown is in a National Historic District, I thought that might be something worth attending, so I probably will be there, and if anyone else is interested, I encourage you to, uh, to I, I think you can RSVP through their website, but I'm sure you can also just show up. I do have a link to the RSVP as well, so I will um, send that information around I'll send that out next week or not next week gosh tomorrow yeah. <laughs> tomorrow <laughs> that is the day I'm looking for <laughs> that'd be great thank you all right uh, communications from HPC staff liaison as I noted um, I will be sending out that information tomorrow regarding the LDDA um, panel discussion and um, we'll talk a little bit about the retreat once we get a little farther down. That's the main thing I wanted to discuss as well, but I will be sending a, uh, a calendar invite for that since we do have a, a time and a, a location as well. So um, I'll cover that a bit more. Otherwise, it was great to see folks at the uh, Saving Places conference. So I thought it went well um, in the new location. Um, I know uh, you've been out of pocket for a little bit, but one of the things that we had on your list that was on the higher priority was was grant applications for cultural resource surveys, and I want to keep that, you know, on the <laughs> on the tip. Yeah, 
Um, and I think Brian, um, at your last meeting, said um, we have gone through an interview process. We're trying to supplement our staff. That is um, kind of short at the time being. So um, we uh, uh, found a very good consultant that's kind of local, has some good historic preservation and grant writing experience. So um, we just have to sign a contract. So I think that'll really help bolster us and get some of these things moving. Wonderful. Great. Good to hear. Um, any other commissioners have a question for staff? No? All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is our public invited to be heard for topics that are not otherwise on our agenda. I am not seeing anyone in the audience, so unless someone comes barreling through the door in the next five seconds, we're going to go ahead and close the public invited to be heard. And that moves us on to new business, which is the Terry Lake Sanitary Sewer Project. All right, good evening. So this is kind of a weird one. There's really kind of no other way to put it. Um, so Boulder County um, Planning reached out to staff in the last couple of weeks. Um, their Historic Preservation Advisory Board has um, basically asked us to weigh in on some buildings at the historic Nishida farm up on 66 that um, could potentially be impacted by the sewer project. So it's a regional sewer project. They are basically exploring either mitigation options for five structures or possibly if we have ideas on any appropriate interpretive options as well. Um, so the challenge is, so this is a really not great map, but um, so yellow is city of Longmont, um, the pink is the sewer line, and then the properties in question are basically here. So these are kind of the properties in question. Um, so as it stands, the sewer project ha has been designed to kind of loop behind the farm so that they don't necessarily impact the buildings. But there is the challenge also of um, at some point in the future, Highway 66 is probably going to be um, widened, which would um, impact the structures regardless. So, um, and they also mentioned, you know, having us weigh in on structures that were at um, a little farther to the east at 9911 um, Ute Highway. That is in the city of Longmont um, city limits. However, um, it, so I guess the, the idea is they could potentially reroute the sewer line. They're trying to figure out if if. Basically, what if there are options? If there's a dog that'll hunt on on what they're looking for. Um, sorry, my southern just came out. Um, <laughs> but so basically, they're trying to figure out if there's a way to either maybe if if we think the 9911 buildings might be worth pursuing significance on, um, or if they should be pushing harder on the Nishida Farm buildings. Um, there is a cult we do have a cultural service a cultural resource survey for um, the 9911 that was done by Boulder Count that was done at some point it was a sorry my thing has come up just one second um, anyway so there was a cultural cultural resources assessment done for the 9911 properties and it they weren't really found the feeling was that they didn't really meet any of the requirements for a national register listing. Um, so really this is mostly a discussion item for you guys and if you have any feedback that we should be sharing with the, um, if there's feedback that we should be sharing with the county, um, I'm, that's something that we can weigh in. After you guys weigh in, I can share that with the county. So there's really kind of, they're not asking us to, to they're not asking us to evaluate. They're basically saying, do we think it's significant enough for them to push harder on? Um, and the other challenge is that this sewer project is pretty far into the process. Um, the plans were approved 
fairly early last year. So it's, I think they're trying to, I don't know if it's a Hail Mary for them or what, but it's very, they're, they're, they're basically trying to figure out what they can do. For lack of a better way of putting it. Right. <laughs> Commissioners have uh, questions for staff? Go ahead and, yeah, hit your mat. There you go. Yeah, why is this of interest to us at all? Basically, it's within our city's uh, planning area. It's basically within our growth area. It's adjacent to the city of Longmont, um, intergovernmental, intergovernmental coordination, and all of that. So we don't have jurisdiction over the property in question, the, the old Nishita farm. We don't currently have jurisdiction over that. It's not annexed. We did a pre, we did, a, there was an annexation referral done back in 21, but that's since expired, so we don't have anything active for this particular property. Are there any risks that we should be aware of? Not that I'm aware of. So, Glenn, do you have thoughts on this? Well, I think they're just trying to widen up their scope of professionals who are looking at this and to give them a little bit more, um, I guess, feedback that um, is it worth rerouting the, the sewer line. I think they're just looking for some professional recommendations. Yep. I don't know that we have a, an example where this has come up before. Not that I'm but, aware of. Um, Sure, be great. I'm sure we can ask them for anything on our city in the future. Right. Commissioner Jacoby, did you have? Yes, I have a question. Maybe, maybe you have an answer. Um, I, I, reading, wading through all that paper that you sent, you know, the 11th hour paper, um, the engineers, Northern Engineering said that the buildings are in poor condition, and, and due to the condition of the buildings, demolition will uh, would be recommended. Uh, the uh, cent was it Centennial Archaeology said the integrity is past where it can no longer support eligibility. Um, but the historic, the, the County Historic Preservation Advisory Board voted 3-0 to preserve it, it sounds like, if I'm reading this correctly. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, do we have any information on why they felt preservation 3-0, um, why they felt it was worth preserving when most of the, the data that you sent us suggests otherwise. Sure. So in speaking with Boulder County staff, the preservation context has to do with the Nishida farm, which is one of the examples of um, Japanese farming communities, in, you know, Japanese farms after um, the internment camps were closed. So you had a number of Japanese farmers who came up to northern Colorado, et cetera, um, and, and began, you know, either began or continued farms that they had already um, had prior to the war. So because it is, does still have um, a number of its buildings intact, and because it does have that historical significance, that was the rationale for, for taking another look at it. The question, too, you know, from staff's perspective is, you know, this is definitely significant to this region from a historical standpoint, but from a practical matter, um, given, A, the sewer project, which is actually going to be going behind, you know, the, the current alignment would not necessarily impact the, the, the buildings, but... I think the sense is because the condition is so poor, they're just going to go ahead. They're, the plan is to take them down. Boulder County does have a deconstruction ordinance, um, but it's more of, of a sustainability-oriented ordinance rather than a historic preservation, um, you know, historic saving historic features type ordinance. So they do have an application for a review for this deconstruction, um, and they basically are asking. You know, they're, they're looking for options that could in, avoid negative impacts to the structures. Um, and if they're, you know, if that's unavoidable, you know, looking for suggestions on what types of interpretive, you know, measures would be appropriate. Uh, Commissioner Gayu? 
I mean, I, I would, yeah, so I was going to highlight the fact that, yes, this is a, you know, Japanese-American farm, that we don't have very many of those left. Mm -hmm. So that, in and of itself, elevates the significance of this property. I mean, it appears to me that they can easily bypass this property, correct? Correct. And the current alignment seems to show it bypassing this yeah. property so, as well. And, you know, while, yeah, it might not be you know, in a shape to be on the National Register doesn't mean it. It sounds like the county, at least at one point, was supportive of it being on the county mm -hmm. register. And as we know, you know, the difference between additions and um, restoring something <laughs> is just money. So, <laughs> you know, and especially at this period where people are very interested in diversifying preservation, this would probably be a good property to get grants, et cetera, yeah, for, for, sure. for the restoration of it. So I would hate to see them just take it down because that's the easiest thing for them to do when they can just simply bypass it and, and mothball it. And point. actually looking at some maps as well, it looks like effectively, I take, I take back what I said because this is... So this this alignment, this is the farm. This this would be impacted. Um, so basically, the question is, can we flip this U or ha reroute the sewer line so right. it would not impact it? So I do apologize for misspeaking on that. I mean, from the pictures that they provided, there's still, you know, a, a lot of original material there. It it might have been added to and. Window frames might have been filled in and things like that, but I, you know, from that's pretty, you know, goodly amount of photographs here. I would suggest that there are, there's still enough there. I've seen a lot less come back to something meaningful. Mm -hmm. so. so really, I think the question from the county is, and, you know, I hate to say, the, for lack of a better way of putting it, they're looking for backup. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, if you look at the that Northern Engineering Plan, it's their sheet SS1 mm -hmm. demolition and overall sanitary plan. I mean, if you, I mean, it's an, an enormous uh, scope in terms of how uh, you know the, 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 the area, but it's only a 15 foot sanitary sewer easement that appears to be straddling the property, which would be typical. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't appear that there are any that the structures that they're well, okay. So the structures that they're identifying that would be impacted by it are the two on the far south. Um, I mean, one of them's running right through the middle of the um, middle of the house. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no way to build this plan as as designed without taking that house down and then. And what I, what I don't know, looking at that drawing, is, you know, is there any, is that really the edge of the, of the Highway 66 right away, right? Um, because if it is, then the house is sitting half on the right of way right. and half on the property line. And, that's, and, and if that's the case, you know, I don't, it's mm. a little harder to say, well, we've got to do everything we can to approve, you know, to keep this building if it's, Potentially going to get wiped out by CDOT at their discretion whenever they decide. When they widen six <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's what's. Although, I will say CDOT will be held to a higher standard yes. than we are for preserving that property and the yeah. county yeah. as well. Yes, yes. So saving it for CDOT to make a decision might actually help us. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, so what I'm looking at with the property line, it looks as if. From what I can tell on this particular plan, uh, on page 23 of the packet, on, yeah. Uh, yeah, on page 23 of, of it's probably going to be a little later, a little farther along in your in your packet, but it's um, it looks like the property line kind of goes right to the edge of the of the building, so it would be in the easement, but it's not in the um, right of way. Uh, Commissioner, oh, let me just get your mic on. Yep. Commissioner Fenster. Yes, has any effort ever been made to preserve uh, 
the remains of the internment. Yes? Yes. Yes, other Grenada an internment camp there. And it's actually being moved into a park service currently. Yes. In the middle of the was, it will be a national park. Yeah, it was there historic site. Sure. What was there federal money involved? Well, yes. It should have been, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate to see it. anything. Uh, torn down from that period of their original structures. Yeah. That'd be sad. Just going to see if I can get this detail plan pulled up. It's a little easier to see. Oh, I think I'm 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 on the HT I'm on the HTML agenda, so that makes it a little different. Oh, but mine's different than Steve's. So, we're all it's this one. 103. Uh, yes, 103. Okay. I don't know why I have Don't look too closely while I'm scrolling. I got the extra. Yeah, let's see what those are. All righty, here we go. Yeah. Let's try again. There we go. Yeah, because you can see that little jog in the property line, and that's typically, yeah, the right of way would ultimately come up straight now. That's where the right of way would come out. So, for for example, we think would CDOT would be sort of obligated to move the building if if there was a. You have any idea what their their process would be? Would it be a case of they would have to t take a cultural resource survey? If it showed significance, then they would be sort of obligated to move the building back off the right of way line. I don't know if it would get that specific, but they'd definitely be obligated to mitigate it in some way if it was going to be demolished. Um, sometimes they have stricter regulations with the floor app, which is some regulations from the federal highways um, that only allows them to have certain options for cultural resources. Um, but that gets that gets tricky, um, especially, and I don't always know the floor app stipulations, and it doesn't look like they could move stuff. They could widen south and, and leave that in place. Um, also, like, is this is this imminent, or is this one of those things? Like, is this on a? Sorry, uh, <laughs> oh, am I am I not talking loud enough for everybody? Yeah, I, um, <laughs> I was gonna let it go, but then you're yeah, it, it just on. won't get recorded without the microphone. Okay, um, is is C dot's involvement actually imminent, or is this just one of those things like we all anticipate sixty six will be yeah. widened relatively soon? Exactly, we don't have any plants on the table. It's one okay. of those at some point in the future it will probably be widened, but yeah. we don't have immediate. There, I'm not aware of immediate plans to widen it, but you can definitely okay. see that the right of way has been acquired. That there is the right of way acquisition you know, or right of way dedications that have that in mind. So I think the long range plans show for it being widened, yep. but there aren't necessarily funds um, okay. allocated for it. So it's, it, you know, nothing has gone into design or anything. Okay. Has there been any federal involvement through your department, for example? State highway. Yeah, it's a yeah. state highway. And yeah, but the buildings themselves are subject to preservation. It's um, so the sur the surveys that have been done for these properties, they found that they're locally significant, but not nationally significant. So they would not trigger any um, necessarily federal protections. It would just it would really be at the the county level. Yep. Um, my page. Oh, sorry, 
on my page 135, um, and it's showing remaining five structures and you know arrows, and um, it looks like building C, which is that lump that's closest to the road, it looks like that's what's rema remaining. I'm not sure that I'm reading this right. Are they saying that's supposed to remain? No, these the are the center? structures that are here now. Got the, you. Yeah, the, they might. The other down. properties okay. were there in 97 when uh, Carl did this survey. Okay. I, I was looking at this and I'm like, I'm reading this yeah, wrong. I have so to be. Okay. This is from Carl McWilliams. He's got a very... Um, very particular style. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, nice. this is from his 97 cultural resource survey that showed the property being of, you know, of value. Okay. Uh, and then, but all of those other buildings are now gone. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Thank sure. you. Um, I have another question. So, are you on? Oh, you on? Okay. All right. Great. Sorry. All right. No, that's oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody shut you off. Sorry. Okay, okay. Now I'm on. Okay. So, back in the '90s, um, Carl did the inventory form, and it went to the Shippo's office, and it was determined officially eligible. So Centennial has recommended that they no longer think it has integrity, but I don't see a change in the official determination of eligibility. So as far as the state is concerned, I think the State Historic Preservation Office would still identify this as officially eligible for the National Register, if that helps Boulder County. This is good information. Okay. And I could be wrong, but I'm not seeing it on the forms that have been given to us. And I'm also not sure why the SHPO would change their previous designation. This Just is good information. Say. So this okay. is the kind of information that I think will be useful to the county. Okay. I mean, it, it feels like it has a, a decent amount of uh, sort of adjacency to the whole Latin barn property that we dealt with, you know, not too long ago, right? It, it's it's a property that was valuable at one point. There has an association with someone, uh, with a family that was, uh, you know, important in in Longmont for one reason or another. Uh, it was in be much better shape 25 years ago than it is now. Um, but there's a story to tell, right? And and I think we're we're at least in the more enviable situation of not having to make that final determination, um, <laughs> and and split the hairs about whether the buildings themselves are how important they are individually versus the whole, and what the appropriate solution is, right? Um, but I I think I would certainly support Boulder County in pushing for some recognition on the property, right? That there, that, it, that, that there needs to be some value, you know, okay. explained here. Yeah. So this is, this is a case where we don't technically have jurisdiction, um, but the commission could certainly make a recommendation to Boulder County. Uh, I also wanted to bring up, because it felt like uh, in this, in their original ask, is that they were asking us as the Longmont HPC to comment on the other property. So if we, if we look at um, mm -hmm. the option two uh, for the sewer line um, back earlier in the packet, there was another option that Northern had proposed that went down um, a, a property to the west that is, in fact, in the city of Longmont. And I got the impression that the the, the Boulder County uh, Preservation Commission was asking us to comment on that particular property and yep. whether or not it had value. And my my reading between the lines, which is just a guess, was uh, if we said, oh, gee, that, that property doesn't have any value, then they could push further to say, why don't you go back to option two and, and move the line? Um, now we don't have any resources, but you, uh, 
Jennifer, you said you had a, a, a cultural resource on that 988. I do. It is. I don't know if it's something you can share with us. Sure. So this is the cultural resource form or inventory form for um, 9911, which was the Bopre House. Um, and ultimately, they found, based on this inventory, that... Let's see. It's officially not eligible. It's officially not eligible. So it doesn't have, it's not a land, it's not a local landmark. It doesn't meet national register criteria. It could meet local landmark significance. It meets three out of the eight, basically. So the question is, you know, would this be significant enough to warrant essentially sacrificing the Nishida properties, or is, are the Nishida properties more significant? So. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's, you know, taking Steve's interpretation, that's, a, it's effectively, how are we splitting this baby up? <laughs> so do we have pictures or any further information about the other property? I've got this particular, I've got the survey pulled up that was okay. completed. And so the picture? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> if nothing else, maybe we can get a Google map. I, I drove yeah. by yeah. it. Yeah. Um, I mean, because obviously, you know, if we're going along the lines of determinations, the Nishida Farm has officially been determined eligible, and the mm -hmm. Beaupre Farm has been officially determined not eligible. Right. So you would sort of guesstimate that the Nishida is more significant than the Beaupre Farm. That's and, the sense I'm getting as yeah. well. And I would say, cul this, you know, culturally. Culturally, I think that's are, true. Yeah. Architecturally, I think I would mm -hmm. say not. So... Driving past both, or in fact, I just sort of went around and went in, so hopefully no one got okay. mad. But um, yeah, okay. but the buildings on the Beaupre property are kind of interesting. Uh, you know, there's a there's a pretty cool. Uh, yeah, you can see the kind of mm -hmm. ar agricultural silo building. There's a barn back. By, there's a sort of chicken coop thing in the front here, mm -hmm. and then there's another barn in the back that's pretty pretty interesting looking. The house that's on the far left is sort of a brick. You know, pretty basic, but not, I mean, it's still, I'm sure it's older than 50 years old and simple little farmhouse. So from an architectural standpoint, there's probably more material integrity, integrity this in property. this property, mm -hmm. not the cultural aspect. So now we're in a more complicated. Right. right. <laughs> Did the, does the forum indicate, or do you have the official determination of ineligibility and why it was determined to be ineligible? So I have the, what's pulled up here, let me make it a little bigger so that yeah. our eyes can see it. Um, so the National Register criteria, it did not meet any of the National Register. Well, this is the form that somebody filled yeah. out. So do we have the letter from the SHPO's office saying, here's why it's ineligible? I'm not aware that we do. Because, I mean, it, you know, I could fill this out and say, yeah. yeah, I don't think it's eligible. But that's yeah. not the official ineligibility. <laughs> yeah, I I do not. This is what was provided to me by the county, and it was this okay. particular assessment, and it did not have a an official SHPO letter. Okay. It was Commissioner Norton, you had a comment? Um, yes, thank you. So I think it's pretty much just going off of what Commissioner Gayu said. You know, if we're looking at these official determinations of eligibility, it would make sense that the Nishida property after 25 years would probably only become more significant for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. But it would also be reasonable that if the last time the Beaupre property was looked at was 25 years ago, our ideas of significance have changed. And so there might be reasons that today the SHPO's office would identify it as significant, whereas it, it wasn't in the past. But if we, I agree with Commissioner Gayu, if we're only going by what we currently have, the Nishida property is pretty significant. But 
I don't think we yeah. should be asked to sacrifice one or the other. <laughs> I know, I mean, <laughs> there, there's a lot of property out there. Can they not reroute in yeah, a way that doesn't go, have to knock down any can't buildings? Can they go down right. the middle? I know, right? Some, I mean, there's so much open space there. It Demolition's expensive. <laughs> yeah, it is. And it has to do with, you know, easement acquisitions and such as well. So, and that's kind of... I feel like we would be in a much better position if this question had been asked of us two years ago. Yeah. Frankly. Yeah. And that's really the challenge we're faced with from a practical standpoint. Yeah, because I mean, when it was determined ineligible, you right. know, maybe 15 or 20 years ago, you know, Longmont and surrounding areas had a lot more farms yes and a lot of them are gone now they're going every week you see another one gone and so you know this now might be significant because of its integrity as a you know an example of a local farm and so they might both be officially eligible and significant now okay. so i would suggest I know, I, I mean, it sounds like the Nishida farm, you know, has been currently, you know, recently assessed. I don't agree with their assessment. Um, yeah. But the, the Beaupre farm, if, it, if this was the last time it's been assessed and we don't actually have an official assessment, um, then I would suggest that that needs to be currently assessed, too, if they're suggesting that they're going to choose between these two properties to tear okay. down. Like, oh. So what I'm hearing is that staff, we should be coordinating with Boulder County, further coordinating with them to get SHPO determinations of eligibility for both of these farm properties yeah. before we can make an actual right. desi and, determination. And isn't, the, isn't the Beaupre farm in the city of Longmont? It's in the city of Longmont. So, so, so I would be we working... Do have authority over that. We have a f authority over the Beaupre, and currently okay. the Beaupre is not being impacted. Right. So it's it's really, from our perspective, I think, you know, they're, they're trying to figure out if, you know, we're willing to sacrifice the Beaupre versus the Nishida, and I don't, it doesn't sound like we're, it, it sounds like there's enough think, thinking that there's enough potential significance for yeah. these properties that we would not necessarily be in favor of changing the alignment. That's what I'm hearing. If I'm mishearing, please let well, me know. W I think we would like it changed just yes. to something else altogether. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Is there, is there an option three that does not somehow negatively impact both yeah. potentially yeah. valuable properties? Right. You know, right, is the sweet spot. But, but I don't think the Beaupre is a sacrificial lamb to offer. Okay. And, I th and unless I'm wrong, there's a f general feeling of support for the Boulder um, Preservation Commission in in pushing back to, s to some degree on this demolition at the Nishida Farm as yes, well. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rick, yeah. I'll get you. Just right. a quick point that if uh, preservation of both uh, agricultural properties. It's uh, one plus one equals three. I think you're adding to the, the environment in the whole area. And so I think we should encourage them to look at opportunities to reroute the line. I mean, we know that the, the sewer line could be rerouted, mm -hmm. but we don't know all the sewer line rerouting options. And so I don't know if they looked at it further, but I mean, I would think we would recommend they try to preserve as the best they can both properties. I'll talk to our engineers who have been working on this project as well. Great. Do you have enough direction from us, do you think? So, sounds like it. So I'm going to talk to, I'm, so my direction as I see it, I'm going to first and foremost talk to county staff and let them know that we do think that the Beaupre pop property is potentially has a level of significance to the city of Longmont that we are not willing to basically sacrifice it for the Nishida farm. But that said, we also think the Nishida farm is sufficiently significant that we should be looking at options to try to preserve both of them. Um, 
related to that, I can coordinate with our Public Works Natural Resources staff who've been working on the sewer alignment project and talk to, the, talk to them as far as um, where in the process, you know, how feasible, if what other options there, there could potentially be given that we have two historic preservation boards and commissions who are very concerned about this loss of historic farmland, farm properties, especially given that one of them is a Japanese American farm. Yeah, I think that's, that's a pretty accurate summary of, where, of what I think we've tried to tell you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go write that down right now. <laughs> it's recorded, right? You were talking into the mic, so you can go back to it. Before it escapes, so. I, I might just add that engineering is um, reviewing um, that portion of Highway 66. I don't know how far west it goes from Main Street, um, but I know um, at least a year ago they were starting to look at preliminary plans that CDOT was bringing forward. So okay. it might not be too far in the distant future. And I don't know if the Beaupre is impacted by the widening of Highway 66, I, I think it, it might yeah. be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's all been resurveyed by what? The, the roadway itself? Yeah, yeah it's at least for the length that it's going to be widened. Um, and I, I'm just not sure how far west it goes from Main Street. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate, I think, being um, asked to comment as well. You might also communicate that. that we appreciate being made aware and brought into the conversation, right? I think I think we have similar goals, and obviously, you know, you're talking about two properties that are adjacent to each other and one in each jurisdiction. So, talking with each other is a good a good thing. All right, thanks. Okay, we'll close that uh, portion of the uh, hearing and move on to uh, prior business. And the first item there is our retreat, which we have somehow miraculously managed to schedule uh, <laughs> for April 21st. I'm sorry, April 1st. Um, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, I, I, I read that. I read it too quickly. April 1st um, at 1.30 to 4.30 in the Longmont Public Library. So thank you for getting that. Yes. And do we have uh, any further information that we want to discuss about that particular retreat in terms of agenda? I think that's really our ask. And, that, and part of that is the um, demolition ordinance table that um, Brian prepared that we provided you. So really, you know, from our perspective, um, are there specific topics that you would like staff to do some additional research and work on to move forward? Um, any particular um, supplemental guest speakers to come in and do any sort of commissioner training on the city's end, et cetera? Um, so if there's specific agenda items that you would like for staff to set up, that was interesting. Um, now, Glenn, you had a kind of a survey a, a few months back of us, right? You asked us for some feedback. Right, yeah, I, I listed all the different items in um, that we had talked about for amending the code, and we kind of did a more interactive, what's, what's your top three priorities there? Um, we could certainly redo that if you think it'd be helpful. Um, this has really been great. This has helped me out quite a bit. Um, yeah. And also, um, our city attorney, we do have a new city attorney that's representing um, our department. So he may really be happy to come and talk about uh, quasi-judicial proceedings. Um, you guys, uh, I think they do it for all boards and commissions, or they point you at a, uh, at a recording. Um, the city attorney comes to planning commission and gives a really good presentation, so I, I think um, they're their attorney would probably, I think I've asked them, can we do that with this commission as well? Because you have a lot of the same responsibilities. So we'll definitely try and get somebody there to do that. I think that'd be really valuable for, for that reason and for the discussion about demolition ordinance so that we can talk through that. And then honestly, if we're really going to talk more about, you know, potential plans and, or you know, overlays and whatnot, having that uh, asset there to kind of mm -hmm. provide bumpers 
would be really valuable. Um, other comments from commissioners about, I mean, the ones that I recall would be, you know, cultural surveys, besides the demolition ordinance, surveys, preservation plan, and then discussion about some kind of overlay district of sort, right? So if there are other items that are, we, we can go back to those meeting minutes. I don't remember if that was a November or December meeting. It felt like some, it was last year. Mm -hmm. Was it last year? I guess yeah. I don't remember <laughs> All right. We'll find it. Yeah, Commissioner yeah, Jacoby. We'll find it. I, sorry, I lost you there. Oh, oh there you are. One more. One more. You can do it. I'm still green. There, there we go. go. Okay. Um, the other thing I suggested we consider, um, and we don't necessarily have to, but was uh, could we do something with the certificate of merit as a, a more effective tool for preservation in our community? Could we? I realize we can't use state taxes, but maybe we could use uh, we could uh, waive permit fees if people would agree to having exterior modifications reviewed by our committee, for example. So, um, so just adding light. that. To, I'm sorry. <laughs> landmark light. Yeah, there you go. Landmark light. <laughs> exactly. They wouldn't get the brass plaque. They wouldn't get that. Yeah, but uh, so maybe adding that to the list. Right. And that came up during a discussion about a, a property that was mm -hmm. being asked to landmark, and we had a kind of a split board decision. So that, that's part of where that came from. So. Commissioner Barnett. Yes. Uh, first of all, my apologies for uh, uh, having a crazy day. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I, I thought, should I be late? I just not show or whatever. I'm taking my chances. So my, my, my cup. No worries. We got um, your corrections in the uh, in the oh. minutes. <laughs> thank so thank you. <laughs> um, and thank you, Maria, for accepting them gently. Yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, I was at the uh, meeting in uh, Boulder, a three day meeting, and I want to thank the. Staff or and the, and the city council for making funds available for us to register for that. One of the things that came up uh, in conversations with people with the various and also in listening to the in the various programs were there that there are a lot of state programs available, and some of which and they said, "Well, is Lama taking advantage of?" Da, da, da? And I said, I don't know. And "I'm really the new kid on the block, so I really don't know." Um, maybe for the retreat, since that's what we're talking about now, and other comments I can make during commissioner comments. Yes. But, but right now, um, perhaps in the retreat, we could get some, go, go over some of, have a topic on what programs, you know, something that doesn't really lend itself to the few minutes we have here with, uh, with staff, but maybe kind of an overview of what programs are available, what programs we take advantage of, um, such as the facade program, uh, which the person who I spoke to said she didn't think that Longmont was participating in that. I said, well, I really don't, I don't know. I mean, I went to a, I went to a panel session on facade mm -hmm. programs, um, and they seemed to be good programs, but you know, I didn't. So um, I would be interested if, you know, if they, we could have a kind of a layout of what's available to us, what we're taking advantage of, what we choose not to, and why. Um, because these are all state-funded activities, um, so uh, I don't know. Woody was I'd be interested if the staff has any comments on that. If they think that's too big a thing, it should be a separate deal or whatever, um, or leave it like that and, and go with it. It's a good question. And then on the, the question, I wasn't here, so I don't know if we heard our uh, our monthly presentation on the East Side Historic District. Um, we did not. We did not. Okay. Um, so I'd go back to something, I'm going over the minutes, something that uh, Commissioner Jacoby said was that, well, this has come up and it's come up and nothing seems to move on it. So I think what I'd like to hear in the retreat is go over what is it that we need to be doing? What can we be doing as a commission? Is this purely in the hands of staff and we just have to sit here? 
and wait? Or can the commission be having hearings or neighborhood meetings or whatever um, to kind of get off of square one on this? Because I go back to the minutes from when I first came on, I read some of the old minutes, and you know, every single month we hear the same exact thing, and nothing seems to happen. So are there, are there reasons why nothing's happening? Is it waiting for a bigger project? Is that part of our, can that be part of our uh, whole discussion that I think I came in on, which is discussion on the historic uh, preservation overlays and landmark light or, or whatever. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if that lends itself. It seems to me it would lend itself to a retreat discussion. So, thank you. Okay. Any other discussion about the retreat itself? If there's items, I mean, and I, I assume this comparison uh, of demolition ordinance is really for us to take home and kind of soak in, unless there's any, I mean, it's a, decent amount of information on this one piece of paper. Uh, yeah, I will mention that this is also Brian's last month, so um, <laughs> the, we're, we're losing a lot, as you can see in this one table. Yeah. So, he's he's um, making good on his uh, threats to retire. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you'd made your retreat on the 31st, I would have roped him into coming and explaining <laughs> this table, but... Right. Well, and it may be um, for anyone who's really um, the commissioners here might, might be worthwhile taking a few minutes uh, to see if it's um, accessible uh, online, at least to, to take a look at any of the language in these various cities ordinances. Um, if, if we really want to take a little time, uh, earmark time during the retreat to to sharpen, I mean, what, what, what I'd like to see is us get some pretty sharp detail on progress of where we want to go with this demolition ordinance during this retreat so that that can be something that can get taken care of in a shorter period of time. If we didn't have time to look at all of them, if we didn't have time to look at all of them, which would you suggest? By way of comparison, I guess. But even if you just took a one or two and just took it, you know, yeah, yeah you know, but, I, I don't, I don't know enough about any of them to know who's, you know, some got a better remain yeah. than others. Yeah. Would it be helpful if I put together a basically a list of links to their ordinances and sent it to you in, Ooh, in that, advance? That would be them? amazing. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've got <laughs> Got that on my task list. <laughs> so I will, in, um, probably in the next week or so, then put together, you know, a link, a link list, and send it to the commission members. So, so you got, so you folks can review these ordinances and see what. What's yeah. up? Yeah. Right. yeah. Oops, sorry. What? When we know. were um, um, researching preservation plans, I know, um, I, I think it was Lafayette stood yeah. out. Correct. So I haven't looked in detail at their ordinance, but maybe they're tied pretty closely. So I would maybe suggest that. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, uh, yeah, we did have, I think, Lafayette, Boulder, and I don't know if it was Loveland or another community. But it was Louisville. Louisville, thank Louisville. you. L, I got the L right. Oh, um, L's. <laughs> the, although that's not a... A fifty fifty shot. Um, those three were, were good, and yes, we did like the Lafayette's plan more than others. Commissioner Barnett. Yeah, no, I, I, I had him on. Okay. <laughs> the other thing we talked about as a possible retreat item was um, this discussion uh, and I, of the uh, some type of a brochure, I'm trying to remember the exact title of it, but where we had, com we had been, had a presentation of different uh, cities and we liked the Louisville one. It was, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and the, when I raised this a couple of meetings ago, the observation of staff was, well, they now have somebody that's coming on soon, and they'll be they'll, people will have staff time to talk about that. Is there any is there any point in talking about that at the retreat, 
what we'd like to see in something like that or just an outline of what we might uh, talk about to recommend to, to the staff to be included in something? Are you talking about something that would be potentially handed out to potential, I mean, to homeowners or something well, like that? Or I'm uh, trying to think of what the name of it was, but it was a historic, I mean, it was a historical brochure or I'd have to go back into the minutes and look and see. Uh, do you, do staff know what I'm talking about? I think it's what we just mentioned there. They have a preservation plan. It, right. it, mm -hmm. it could have been Louisville. I can't remember. But we did show you as here's a great example of what that right. could look like. I'm guessing maybe that was it. It was multicolored. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, we, we have had discussions in the past over time about outreach to the community. And I think when, when Karen was here, uh, uh, she did a little bit of that early on, and we did have a few people that came in, and 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 um, I think we might have had one landmark request and a couple of certificates of appropriateness of, of folks who decided to do a little work because they learned about the fact that they could get some tax breaks mm -hmm. and so on. And so we did, we have talked in the past about this commission um, doing a little bit more outreach, and and as if I I don't know if it's still there, but at one point there was a small amount of budget. Um, that was kind of allocated towards the commission, um, you know, some thousands, nothing giant, but but enough to spend, you know, on a little mailer in particular, um, you know, in in our historic neighborhoods, for example, um, just to kind of give people a little bit more, uh, uh, maybe their new homeowners or what have you, it's been a while, mm -hmm. right? Just, uh, hey, you can come in here and you can get some money if you want to, if you want to, if you want to make an improvement to your property, you can have wait, you know, application fees waived, and you potentially could get some tax credit and money, to, and it might be worth it. You know, some of that. So that might be where that's coming from, or I might have, or maybe not. But uh, would uh, would it be a possibility to get one of the uh, media, one of the newspapers, for example, uh, to put together an article? about what we do that would perform that that function i would think that one of the newspapers would be interested in doing that and it would give us something to hand out later yeah i think that's not a bad suggestion i'm sure between the call and the leader that somebody might be willing to make a little focus um at maybe as part of preservation month yeah which is coming up <laughs> So uh, I guess what I would suggest is, uh, you know, I think we can go back to that earlier meeting in terms of the hierarchy of of um, items that we wanted to discuss. If it would be possible for you to, when you send that link out, a proposed mm -hmm. agenda that we can, re you know, but because we won't have a meeting between now and right. then. Um, so if we can get a proposed agenda out with a, you know, week or two, preferably beforehand, uh, just to kind of vet the information that we want to cover. Yeah. Yeah, because I have eight, uh, eight items. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, it's going to have to be, no. going to have to prioritize that yes. priority. Yeah, right. We do, we do have three hours allotted for this, so. Right. No. <laughs> Not a three-day tour. Good, good luck getting everyone together for three days. Right. Right. <laughs> so I think that'd be good. We can, we can bullet point them out and maybe have you take a look and say, because you've mentioned it's priority for you to talk about demolitions. We get the city attorneys, probably a priority. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we can, we can uh, do some outreach to the state as well mm -hmm. and put together, you know, maybe a couple of different agendas for you to look at. Right. I mean, my thought is if there's a decent amount of time on this ordinance and we get real direction there and we have some broader topics that we just identify as wanting to cover in our meetings that we could, you know, we don't have to solve everything at this retreat. We're just trying to plan out some thoughts. And so then we can include, you know, one of those items on a, a at a hearing. I mean, at we have hearing. one item today. You know, as we have smaller, you know, if we have a meeting that has a ton of 
items, then maybe we don't get to it. But if we have a meeting that either doesn't have any hear public hearing or we have one small item, then we take w one of those uh, components from the retreat and we and we start talking about it and you know a little more detail during one of the one of our mm -hmm. meetings. So anyway, all right. Any other comments or discussion on the retreat? Thanks. Uh, and then uh, last on the agenda was uh, Dickens Barn Preservation Plan update. Anything? Yes. So um, I was hoping to have an agreement for all of you to look at this evening, but it is currently in um, the applicant's corporate people's hands, so they're reviewing it currently. So we have been working with the uh, city attorney's office to essentially put together a dedication agreement um, that would function as a preservation plan, uh, you know, a step one in a preservation plan. So we have, a, um, the applicant is um, dedicating a pretty good chunk of the property that includes the barn to the city. Um, and the way it's going to be handled is, so we'll record the, the final plat. So we currently have a site plan and final plat under review. We're waiting on a, a, a resubmittal of that. Um, and so hopefully by the April meeting, we'll have um, basically a draft agenda that's ready for everyone to sign for this commission to take a look at um, before it goes to, I think, council to have the ultimate signatory authority, authority on it, um, but basically to, for this commission to give it its blessings. Um, we've talked quite a bit about the plan for the barn, and at this point, the um, developer is planning to dedicate the land and the barn to the city, as well as a one-time cash contribution of $70,000 to um, basically do some stabilization work on the barn as well. So once we have the barn in um, our own under city ownership, then we can move forward and determine if it's something that we want to go through the landmark process, et cetera. Um, figure out how we want to deal with it from there and, and really do some more detailed preservation work and preservation planning for it. Great. Well, that's exciting. Yeah. Any questions or comments on that one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Commissioner Barner. Yes. Do you have anything? No, I'm on. <laughs> okay. Let um, us go. During the, maybe you guys never should have paid for me to go to Boulder. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, there were a couple of presentations, including an absolutely magnificent keynote on um, the concept of preserving the history of the, of, the, of the land, preserving the history of the buildings. That it's not just the building itself, but how do you, and, and I'm screaming Dickens Barn, Dickens Barn, I've heard this conversation, what's happening? With, so I was glad to see it's on the agenda, but I guess my question is, we know that this, this is not just a building that's being preserved, that, that there's some historical significance to that building, things that happened there. Mm -hmm. And at one point, there was some discussion that the, um, whether one of the buildings would have panels or something which described what, why this was a historically significant place. Is that still in the mix? So that was, um, that was a discussion that took place early in the planning process for this property that was assuming that the barn would be demolished and not dedicated to the city. They were talking about, well, we can do some interpretive you know, murals or pan plan panels on the building. Um, now that we're getting the barn, we can actually do something that involves the barn as opposed to a 7-Eleven with some murals on it. So I think, I, I think, we, have, I think we have an opportunity um, ultimately to do some pretty interesting things here. Um, and because there is a pretty substantial portion of the land that's going to be dedicated to the city as well, part of it for a greenway, this would be basically called greenway land. Um, so it's not greenway per se, but it's property that would go with it. So basically working with our, our, our open our open lands, public you know, natural resources, open space, parks folks to figure out how, what box we can put this in so it meets everyone's program, pro, pro, programmatic needs and et cetera. 
It is uh, rather close to a regional trail, so yes. there is great opportunities to kind of educate folks of why the barn is there. So, yep. good thoughts. Very. Yeah, we definitely have some unique opportunities. Um, this definitely is a very unique opportunity, and um, was happy to be able to, you know, it was great to be able to work with the applicant and, and make this happen. So, um, yeah, once we have, once the barn is in our possession, then we can really kind of move forward and figure out exactly, you know, what to do with it, what grants to pursue, et cetera. Great. Commissioner Guy. So is this, I'm sorry, I think it's been a, it's been a while since I've, <laughs> is this the, the property that is uh, on Highway 119? Correct. Okay, so, yep. but we are losing quite a few other buildings. We are so, losing a few building, other buildings. I mean, I, the suggestion I would make is that those need to be documented and the interpretation, you know, whether it's panels or, you mm -hmm. know, QR code or whatever you, however you want to do it, you know, that that still needs to be interpreted because a barn sitting by itself is, is not, you know, it's not the story. It's not the full picture of why, you know, there's a reason why that barn was there and, it, you know, and the barn doesn't necessarily tell that story just by itself. So, yeah, so, I mean, you know, the family was there and they had a house and they did, you know, they farmed or they ranched, whatever they did. So they had these outbuildings that are associated, you know, with their home and with their property and with the land as a larger feature. Um, so that's probably what I would suggest we would be interpreting would be the actual, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the farm life that the barn was part of. And that's, right. You know, what and I, I would, it so. seems that that would be part of the barn rather than some panels on the 7-Eleven, though. Right, no, yeah, yeah, I would say, I would suggest, like, along the greenway, yes. you yes. would have yes. maybe, as you know, yes. two or three, however, you know, however many you wanted to have, but that would tell the story of that farm, not just the nice barn. <laughs> Great. Commissioner Jacoby. Um, yeah, I, I would like to echo that, that the barn standing by itself is uh, maybe a little less interesting than if, if we could include some information about the, the neighboring farm that, that came with it. Driving by, you know, I drive, we all drive by that place all the time, right? Going out to the I-25. Some of the sheds look like they're in rehabilitatable, if that's a word, state or in reasonable state, and some are totally trashed. Mm -hmm. um, the structural assessments we have are from the original developer who really wanted to tear everything down. And I wonder if we could look at some of those, again, uh, from the city standpoint, if it's gonna be on city land and see if any of them can be preserved. And it might give it a bit more context to the barn. And the, the, the second thing I w wanted to say was, uh, yeah, you know, I'd love to see, especially if it's gonna be right on the greenway and the, the bike path is going there, I've written up a history of, of Mary Dickens that I submitted to the, the newspaper that they promptly ignored for last year's uh, Historic Preservation uh, Month. Um, I could give you that if you'd like to look at it because that would be interesting to put on a panel. And another point that I think might be interesting for an educational panel, that property is at the intersection of the Homestead Act which brought a lot of people out to the area before the city was even formed, and suffrage and women's rights. Up until just about that time, women could not own property. So this is, it kind of brings up a number of factors of history that are, are kind of interesting, and that, that could be put on a panel too. So just throw that out there. Great, thanks. So with regard to the other buildings that are on the property, um, those would stay on the property that's to be developed. Uh, I would have to go, I need to double check on the plat, but okay. I'll have this for you at the next meeting. Um, it's really the only barn that would be, or the only barn, the only building that would be dedicated to the city would be the barn. Um, they've really kind of adjusted some of their lot lines and dedications and such to, so to make sure that the barn is outside of their development envelope which it was not prior to, you know, which originally they weren't planning to do at all. Commissioner Gow? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I think probably what Rick was talking about is maybe, you know, they would let you move some of those smaller buildings onto your property so that, again, so that, I mean, they wouldn't be in their original position, but mm -hmm. they would, you know, allow for a little more context to the barn. 
Yeah, so, I've, so I actually was have gone on the property and into the barns and the buildings, and um, I would say the barn is the least sketchy structurally mm -hmm. <laughs> of them all. Um, there are some sheds and some chicken coops, and they're in various states, but I'll, I'll go back and take a look at the historical surveys and such and the photographs, but I know there were a couple that were in pretty rough shape. Um, the house is not in terrible shape, but I know it's also been altered pretty pretty heavily um, so that it's not really close to its original form. So definitely have some challenges, but that's something, you know, we can look at it. I mean, I know I know that we've, we've gotten a lot more out of the developer than we thought we were going to get out of them. So <laughs> I think that's something we need to keep in mind. The wind's for sure. Yeah. Great. Any other comments or questions about this particular item? No? Okay. Then uh, we'll move on to the last, I, uh, <coughs> which is uh, comments from any of the HPC commissioners. General comments. Commissioner Jacoby. At the risk of making, making this meeting longer, um, you, we were talking about outreach. And... Um, you probably all know I live in a, designate, a city designated home and I live in a historic district and I went to a neighbor's house the other day uh, or about a month ago and um, after our last discussion uh, or our last meeting it was kind of interesting because they have all new double pane windows and I thought about it and they had actually installed it themselves. I don't think, I'll bet they didn't come before the commission. Um, this was about oh, maybe 20 years ago um, that they installed the windows. Uh, the same owners uh, sold the house uh, about a, a year and a half ago, but just before they did that, they installed a swamp cooler and they put it on the roof. Um, and this is a, a designated house as well, um, which is interesting. So, and... Uh, also, last week, I was emptying, cleaning out files, and I was looking at a file of paperwork on my house, and I received a letter, August 2018, from Karen Bryant, the senior planner, historic preservation planner, and it was sent to Dear Property Owner, your property is listed on the City of Longmont's Register of Local Landmarks. And it goes through and it explains to the owners of the house what they've got, we should be reaching out to everybody in these districts, but we should be especially reaching out to the owners of these houses because I don't think that the modifications made to this house that I, I was discussing was done uh, with any malice. I, I think they didn't think that they had to come before the board. They had forgotten, okay? Uh, this letter says examples of exterior alterations requiring certificate of appropriateness include painting, window or door replacement, roof replacement, siding replacement, room or deck additions, and porch enclosures. Well, I can tell you, I have painted my house different colors without coming to the board. Um, I know many of my neighbors have. Um, if this is something we truly want to be in control of, and I'm not so sure we really care about what color they paint the house, so long as they maintain it, but if we want that, um, we, we need to get this letter out to them. I've also replaced the roof on my house. Um, had hail damage, contacted my insurance. I didn't think to come here. I put the same kind of roof on. Maybe we should ch modify this and not say we need to know about painting. Maybe we only need to know about roof replacement if replaced with different materials, for example. But if they're just gonna you know, renovate the roof, we don't need to have to go through the whole uh, you know, dog and pony show. Um, but I think we should send a letter like this out to all uh, designated homes at least every couple of years. This is dated uh, August 2018. Um, and so, because it's really an honor system we have for maintaining these homes after we designate them. But it's clearly, you know, I've seen some violations just, you know, locally. I'll, I'll bet there's a lot more out there. So. so I can tell you one thing with regard to roof replacement. What's supposed to happen is if something, if someone pulls a building permit for a property that's flagged as a historic landmark, it's supposed to get sent to me for 
for review. And at that point, I would also, if it's something that, you know, for example, they're doing like with like, um, you know, it's one of those taking a look and saying, okay, well, this either needs to go to the commission or staff can sign off on it. Um, and that gets also to our code discussions as we've looked at our code updates because paint, painting's not in the code anywhere. I've never, I've, I mean, I've never worked in a place that, I mean, I know, do know that there are historic districts and commissions that regulate paint color right. and regulate painting types. Um, but it's, you know, they're, they're few and far between. Um, they're definitely few and far between. So um, that's something as we do our code update and looking at, you know, major versus minor COAs and, you know, what can staff approve versus what requires commission approval. That's something moving forward we definitely need to have, you know, from a staff perspective, it would be really useful to have some good guidance on that. Uh, hold on. Yep. Let's see. I've got, yes, Commissioner Gayu next first. So I think part of the issue is that your friend may be in the historic district, but that's a national register district, and we do not have purview over that. Mm -hmm. But it's also a, a city designated landmark, her home. Her home is also city? Yes. Okay, well then, yes, they should have come. But I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's, there's this idea, which I actually agree with, which if it's on the national register, it should probably be on the local register too, but... Um, that's what you know. So we have those, and then the only, only time we would have purview is if they came to us and they wanted, you know, a, a tax credit, essentially. So, yeah, it's it's hard. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Fenster. Is, isn't there, <clears throat> aren't there any protocols in terms of turnover of these properties when you take ownership that informs the new owner that there are limitations and that uh, certain changes in the property would be subject to approval. Uh, I'm not aware of that, but uh, it's going to be very difficult to impose such limitations if the owner never knew that they existed. I believe we, we do the designation by ordinance, and we do record the ordinance, I believe, to the property. Yep. So... Um, but does somebody read it in their title search? Well, do the real know. estate brokers know that they're supposed to inform the new buyers? Or Honestly, the, new buyers? the real estate brokers usually use it as a marketing tool, like own this landmark. Yeah. Um, well, but there's a downside. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it shows up on a title. It would. Sh it should. Yeah. It should. Yeah. Should. Okay. And it should. I mean, it should. I think the point is. Fair, like we, this board isn't really in the in the um, at least it hasn't been since I've been on here uh, with a desire to see every paint color and roof change and so on. That has been the the idea has been that those sort of minor changes would be really we rely on staff to be that first filter to say okay this is pretty basic we don't need to worry about this yeah. we can handle it we're I mean we have we have staff that is educated and understands this you know world here right so they're the filter to say okay wait a minute this is enough of a change that warrants coming before the board you know but but not like we don't want to be looking at paint color right? and, and making people go through that either right yeah, I mean, if they're going <laughs> asphalt shingles to asphalt shingles that's one thing but if they're going asphalt shingles to metal roof absolutely they would be getting sent to the commission for that Okay. The point is still, we need to get a letter out, mm -hmm. to the new houses, especially the current proposed location. All right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, other, oops, yeah, I've got somebody up here. Yeah, Commissioner Barnert. Yes. Um, one of the things that came up during the conference mm -hmm. was uh, that in the end of August, there's a, a meeting in La Junta, and I was wondering if the city had uh, any funds available for people who want to register for that. I'm planning to go. I've made my hotel reservation. Um, it's, uh, for those of you who don't know, La Junta is a fairly significant city historically, including what I didn't know. I had a nice conversation with one of the city managers there that um, 
one of the hotels there was in the Green Book. And so it's, uh, and they're going to be, there's going to be a tour of that hotel with a whole presentation of um, how it was used as a Green Book hotel. So, um, and there's evidently, that's just one of many things in La Punta that are architecturally significant. Ben Sports there. That was the Santa Fe Trail, Ben Sports. Yeah. 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 That's one of the first settlements so, in Colorado. Um, like I said, I'm, I, 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 I have made my hotel reservation, but I didn't register yet, so. I didn't know if uh, funds are available for that. We'll look. Yeah, we'll look okay. into it. All right, thank you. Any other commissioners' comments? No? Okay. How about our city council representative? Thank you, Chair Lane. Uh, first of all, as always, thank you for your work and your service to the city. Uh, I did want to update you that the mayor has uh, started a new thing with city council where once per month we've been meeting earlier than the normal city council time to specifically discuss boards and commissions uh, because it's become apparent that unless you are the liaison, you generally do not know what the other boards and commissions are doing. Um, and so our first one was a couple weeks ago. And uh, as it concerns this commission, first I explained the quasi-judicial nature of it. And so... There's not a lot of special projects compared to, say, some boards that don't have that same um, that same responsibility. Uh, but I did talk about the monthly updates that you've been getting about uh, the East Side historic, or I don't know if it's just the East Side, but the historic overlay district concept, and that there is a desire by the commission to have an, an, another meeting with city council on the subject. But I know that some of that is determinative of what staff and where they're at, uh, where staff's at on, on the process, along with consultants and, and legal. Um, and so uh, the council is made aware, and we will be having another update uh, later this month. And so uh, it'll be before your retreat. So I'm sure that we'll probably be able to do a better update after the retreat happens. So likely in April, I'll be able to give that information to the council, but they are aware of it and that that's still something the commission would like to pursue and, and speak with council upon. So thank you. Great. Thank you, councilman. We appreciate that communication. All right. That brings us to adjournment. Unless anyone has anything else burning a fire, I see nothing. Uh, <laughs> 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 and we have a motion to adjourn from Ch Commissioner Jacoby. And seconded by Commissioner Guy. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all for your time.